So my name is Fraz Mir. I'm a consultant physician at Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge uh, in the United Kingdom. I'm also the Associate International Director for South Asia for the Royal College of Physicians London. So in the UK, um, we have a very different population of patients uh, nowadays than we had, say, 50 years ago. The patients in the UK are a lot more, uh, a lot older than they used to be. They have a lot more medical problems uh, because of the age than they used to have. So they don't fit into nice, simple diseases anymore. They often have um, five or six, sometimes even more diseases that one has to deal with. Dementia is a big issue. We have a population that is affected by dementia uh, immensely. At one, any one point in time in my hospital, at least a quarter of the patients under my care will have dementia, sometimes half of them uh, and more. Um, and the way the hospitals are set up is in such a way that the training of the doctors, the setup of the hospitals, is geared towards dealing with simple or single organ based problems rather than the multiple complexity that patients present with nowadays. And we therefore felt that given that we had a number of problems in hospitals throughout the United Kingdom where patients weren't being given the, the type of care that they needed, um, it was felt that we were going to struggle even more in future as the problem got uh, even, even worse. So the Future Hospital Commission was a programme started by the Royal College of Physicians which aimed to try and look at these problems and to try and uh, make a, a way of, of dealing with them by developing initiatives, developing projects, developing uh, a, a package of changes in hospitals that could cater for the needs of our patients better. Uh, so this is an ongoing program. So it started in 2012, um, and it started initially with a report that looked at the issues that I've just outlined to you. Uh, and after that, uh, there was a commission that sat with uh, nurses, doctors, other he allied health professionals who sat together and, and, and looked at these issues and came up with a vision of how they felt they wanted a hospital of the future to look like with seven uh, uh, day a week um, medical services, provision of care 24-7 um, um, uh, at the same level and the same quality as you would expect. Uh, and also looking at continuity of care, making sure that the, 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 the team working was multidisciplinary and also making sure that the the transparency and openness that is so important nowadays in medicine uh, is maintained uh, and there is no blame culture. So that was the vision uh, that they had about the Future Hospital uh, Commission uh, and the project is ongoing in the sense that they have uh, developed some test site hospitals if you like, development site hospitals which are looking at different models of working which they will sort of um, assess properly, uh, trial, and then hopefully in future we'll be able to learn the lessons from those test sites and others that will come online uh, and formulate a proper template, uh, which hopefully can then be rolled out to the rest of the hospitals in the country uh, uh, and, and serve the purpose that we have described. So I mean, these are problems that all countries are currently facing in the West. And these are problems that will happen in India sooner than, than you may think. Um, we are all faced by an ageing population and each country is trying its own uh, sort of uh, path or trying to find its own solutions to um, uh, dealing with the issue. The problem of course is that populations in different parts of the world are different and the population in the UK is very multicultural in most parts. They have um, uh, very different health indices in different parts of the country. So actually the, the way you tackle these problems, although there is a general uh, principle overlying this, the actual solutions may be very different in different parts of even the same country. So the same features of the programme, I mean the, the themes that they came up with uh, were multifold. One was looking at the organisation of medical care that is provided to patients. So in the UK we have a very, or used to have a very um, definite model of you know, outpatient patients and then patients who are admitted for the emergency take. 
but actually a lot of patients are in the grey area in between. They're not ill enough to be admitted to hospital, but they are at the moment, or used to be until recent times. Um, whereas the other group of patients are very well and don't need to be admitted at all, and they, they're just the ones seen in outpatients. The, bi the people in the middle are the ones who, if you could perhaps offer them urgent clinic appointments, if you could see them, assess them quickly, treat them quickly, you may prevent them from being admitted in the first place. And this is the whole concept of ambulatory care that we have in the UK now, where the, if you like, the gulf between outpatients and the emergency medicine unit is, is filled by the access to the ambulatory care clinics, where patients can be turned around very quickly. So the organisation has changed, and the emphasis now in the UK is on uh, community-based programmes, so doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, um, going out to the patients in their houses and homes rather than everyone coming into a big hospital. So the organisation has changed. The second issue that came to the fore, the theme that we derived from the commission repo Commission's report, was the issue about generalism. So generalism is the sort of, if you like, the second theme. As I mentioned already, the patients have become more and more complex with more and more comorbidities whereas medical training up till now um, and um, postgraduate training in particular has concentrated on very specialist areas. So what was happening is that people, doctors in the UK, were training to be gastroenterologists, respiratory physicians, cardiologists, and they were becoming more and more specialised, whereas the patients who were coming in were coming in with a specific health problem, yes, but they also had all these other comorbidities. And you would be in a ridiculous situation where they come in with a heart attack, which the cardiologist can deal with, but the diabetes, their Parkinson's disease, their uh, sort of emphysema, all those things the cardiologist felt they weren't able to cope with, and therefore the patients were suffering as a result. They weren't being provided the holistic approach that they required, um, especially if they came in demented. You know, the whole hospital um, structure was never really kitted out um, to dealing with a demented dementia and demented patients. So you can imagine a patient comes in with a heart attack, that's the easy part to, tr uh, to, to uh, treat. The difficulty is that if they're demented as well, they may be running around the ward, being very restless, agitated, they may be a risk to themselves and other people. And that is a challenge of trying to cope with that aspect of the illness, which until now has been quite, quite lacking. And the idea of the future hospital is to try and tackle this by ensuring that the hospital is set up in a way that deals with those things, but also training in medicine concentrates on generalism more um, rather than just super specialization. So that everyone, even if they're a cardiologist or rheumatologist or respiratory physician has a good grounding in general medicine that allows them to deal appropriately and, and adequately with all the range of health problems that patients present with. And I think particularly in India, um, that aspect of it would be relevant because um, it, with the sort of explosion in uh, private medicine, patients can be at the risk of being over-investigated or over-exposed to investigative medicine, uh, which I think for them and for many other reasons is, is a bad thing. So if the same cardiologist who wants to treat someone with chest pain um, has a good grounding in general medicine, they're less likely perhaps to send them for um, unnecessary investigations for the heart if they present with chest pain that isn't really cardiac sounding. So they may actually be more confident to just say, well, actually, this is not heart disease. Take some antacids, off you go home. There's not a, you, know, you don't need an angiogram, you don't need a CT scan. That's an extreme example, but the idea is that strengthening general medicine or generalism will allow a better deal for patients of all ages, not just the elderly, but all you know, the young and, 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 and even children. Yes, yeah, so the drive of the Royal College uh, in, in the UK is to uh, emphasise uh, the importance of general medicine training. And in fact, the whole training programme uh, is in the process of being reviewed uh, to try and reflect the needs of more, more exposure to general medicine. Uh, and that's, that's a project that's ongoing at the moment. No, hard and fast recommendations haven't been made, but they were coming. Yeah, I think the challenge, the challenge is clearly there to entice people into it. So the solution, one of the solutions that has been looked at is that even if you want to be a cardiologist, you still do general medicine. So you, everyone does general medicine and then they become a cardiologist on top. 
So, you know, the training is not divorced from the general, general medicine aspect. So everyone does general medicine and the speciality. Pipe to the ears, but ultimately this is the training that may be required to deal with the patients that present to us. You know, no one in the UK at least at the moment, the vast majority of people who come with heart attacks will have so many other problems, as I mentioned, you know, frail elderly dementia, diabetes, Parkinson's disease, etc. etc. You know, the heart attack is not the only problem that they're coming in with. They're coming with all these issues. Their mobility issues, their social issues. You have to have a grip on all those things to offer the best standard of care for them. And the, uh, the, the duration of the course, I mean, it's not been finalised yet, but the idea would be that the general medicine component would be built in for everyone. And I mean, ultimately, the, 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 the idea or the ethos of the Future Hospital Commission is to make the patient the centre, uh, you know, offer truly patient centred care, which is in the best interest, not, not just paying lip service to it, make sure it's a multidisciplinary sort of approach so you get everyone involved that needs to be involved, allied health professionals as well as the specialists, um, but also make sure that we're treating patients with compassion and we're caring for them and not just treating them. So I think there is a difference. So care uh, is different to just treating. So a patient comes in with a pneumonia, I can treat them as a doctor with antibiotics. That's the easy part, that's the treatment. The caring aspect is to make sure that they are being fed and watered properly, to make sure that they're being uh, walked in the hospital, mobilised, make sure they're being turned in, in bed if they're frail, to make sure they don't develop pressure sores. All those aspects are about caring for the patient and making the patient centred, rather than just sort of simply treating them. Uh, which sort of leads into, the, if you like, the other major theme, which was about leadership, and you know, doctors in particular being uh, leaders again, and perhaps not just thinking about professionalism uh, as what's outlined in the job description, but actually taking responsibility in real terms. So again, going back to the example of the patient with the pneumonia um, who has, uh, who's in hospital, um, if they develop complications, then you know, find out why they develop complications. Not, to, not because you want to apportion blame on people, but to try and work out what the issues were that led to the problem, and then work with others to try and collaborate in an open and transparent manner to find a solution and then work, make it work, so that it doesn't happen again in future. So that sort of professionalism, leadership aspect, is something which is very much emphasised, along with you know, the other themes of things like IT systems, which is a huge area, and India probably knows more about it than we do, but you know, telemedicine, electronic medicine prescribing, uh, and also electronic medical records, that sort of stuff. So that, that was, if you like, that's the vision of what we're trying to hope uh, to achieve with the Future Hospital Commission, you know, seven days a week, um, uh, and, 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 and with compassion for everyone who comes in as a patient. So I think, as I mentioned already, the, the, to my mind, the relevance uh, of it comes uh, in, the, in the drive towards generalism again. Because I think in India, um, there is a pressure, or there is a, an attraction also, for doctors to specialise very quickly. Uh, and a lot of doctors practise a lot of private medicine, which is fine. But the, the idea about the Future Hospital Commission is to make sure that all of them have a grounding in general medicine so that they can deal with the other issues that your patients will present with and not just your specialist area. Um, the issues around leadership, you know, making the patient uh, the centre of, of care. I think in the current systems in India where you have a sheer overwhelming volume of patients to see both in the public and the private sector, those issues can be difficult sometimes to maintain to a decent standard. So I think those, those two issues in particular, the professionalism and leadership, plus the whole drive towards generalism, I think are of particular relevance to the Indian community.